I'm Michael Fairman, and I'm here on the set of The Young and the Restless at Crimson Lights, no less, with Sharon Case. And this is a very special interview, and I'm so glad we're doing this because it is Sharon's 25th anniversary of playing Sharon Collins Newman, whatever the is. <laughs> and this is so great. We're going to kind of talk about her career and the role and what's going on and all of that stuff. And I want to start with... It was 1994, mm -hmm. and you were the third Sharon. Mm -hmm. There was Monica Potter, mm -hmm. Heidi Mark, right. and then you. Mm -hmm. When you came on to the show, what do you remember about the audition process and getting the part? Well, the audition process was fun. Um, I think I came in and read for Bill Bell on a Saturday, if I remember correctly. And then um, I got a screen test. So that week I did a screen test with Joshua Morrow. I remember it was in the Fenmore's boutique. Fenmore's and boutique. they were just two high school kids and they met up in the boutique. They were, uh, they had been dating or they had a crush on each other. And it was just a cute scene like that. What did you think of Joshua when you first met him? Oh, he was adorable. So you thought adorable. Yeah. Okay. Adorable. Okay. And then some. Okay. Uh, so yeah. you were like, oh, I hope I get to work with this guy? Really hope I get to work. You hear I hope that, I Joshua? Get this job. <laughs> okay. And so then what happens? You get called back and you... Um, they let us know after that screen test that, um, you know, who got the job. And I think I went to work that week. <laughs> and you, I read somewhere that you thought, and tell me if this is true, that you would only last six months? Yes. So you thought... Well... Uh, what? Why did you think that? There's a reason. Well... Uh, not only because there were two other girls that played the role before me. Sometimes when that's happening, you, you they don't maybe know yet what they're looking for, so it might not have been me either. Mm -hmm. But mainly, I was working on a primetime show called Valley of the Dolls at the time, and we were actually on hiatus, which is why I met uh, here at the studio on a Saturday, because I, I had been working on that show. So we were on hiatus, and while you're on hiatus, you wait and see if your show's gonna get picked up for another season. Right. I knew I had six months off, but if Valley of the Dolls got picked up, I would have to go back there. And YNR knew that. Um, so they kind of hired me for six months. And then when Valley didn't get picked up, thankfully, because I'm now here, um, I just carried on. See, to me, knowing you as I do, it doesn't feel like 25 years of Sharon, but for the character of Sharon, it feels like 80 years of Sharon because right. she's been through <laughs> The ringer oh and then some and all of the twists and turns. Do you so, feel that way too? Like, yeah, I do. Do you, do you feel like the character, it feels like more than 25 years? Yeah, because the time really flew by for me. You right. know, it doesn't feel like I've been here 25 years. But yeah, you're right. Sharon has been through so many dramas and happy times, but just so many stories. They have asked me to put this character through everything. And it's been, you know, a real uh, tough acting experience, but I learned a lot and I had, you know, great crew and cast and had a great time doing it. And they started her as from the wrong side of the tracks, right? right. She was yeah. supposed to be the wrong side of the tracks, meaning the rich kid. Right. Not the, the rich side of the tracks. Right. But not the a bad, bad. Right. right. She wasn't a not bad Not the wrong girl. side of the tracks. Yeah. Was she a bad girl? She wasn't. No. no. I don't know. No. No. I mean, she became one. She got into a lot of mischief. Yes. So, uh, but you know, in, when she was introduced, no, she was um, a nice girl going to school, supporting her mom, uh, worked hard. And, um, you know, after getting into the Newman family and dealing with Nikki, Sharon got some crazy ideas, the things she wanted to go and do. I have a dossier. I call this the Sharon Collins dossier. This is a file. <laughs> oh no, my file. Of the file of what has gone on with Sharon Collins <laughs> in her life. And I would like to just first to at tell you okay. a few things that I have done. <laughs> I don't know if many of you know the occupations that Sharon has had. I don't know if you remember these occupations. I don't occupations, know if I do. But let's just go over some of these. Okay. Former victim liaison with the Genoa City Police Department. Well, I remember that one. Okay, and what did you think of her doing that? Oh, uh, that was fun. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. Um, you know, that was uh, with Jordy. I was just last year, right? Yeah. With Jordy, and we we liked playing that. We sort of saw us, ourselves as like a Mulder and Scully. That made it fun. Well, here's one. Graduated from Genoa City University as a psychology major. What? I, don't I mean, mean, now she has psychological issues. Right. She, right. I guess that was her interest. Did you in know it. this? I did know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, she just graduated last year. I remember I gave a big graduation speech. That's right. Yeah. Right. And then she formally worked at Chelsea 2.0. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Missy and I were just now talking about that like an hour ago. 
See, okay. And then she was a former CEO at Newman Enterprises in Victor's absence. Oh, my favorite. That was my favorite when Sharon took, took over, over Newman Enterprises. I had the kookiest scenes. Um, you know, that was when <laughs> Sharon uh, was marrying Victor and trying to get rid of him and take over the company. And she was... Uh, she did become CEO for a minute. And, you know, Joshua Mora always tells me, and this is very flattering, and that our episode, which I, th I think it was the 10,000th, yeah. was the episode where Sharon was carrying Victor's urn out of the um, <laughs> out of the ceremony. That we had like a, you know, a kind of a ceremony from, for him, though he wasn't really dead. Sharon knew that, but no one else did. So this funeral, Sharon was happily carrying the urn out, thinking she had gotten away with a lot. Oh, my God. I, I, and it was It was funny. so great. It was, it was great. really funny. Yeah. I mean, you've gotten to play comedy, too. Now, she also was a, a, a former <laughs> mentor to the models at Jabot. Oh, right. You were, right? That's you were a right. model. I loved working at Jabot. So, you know, we used to have this, uh, we called it the Newman Mega Set. And so it was uh -huh. all these different um, sets that kind of connected through hallways. And you could um, have all the cast and people who worked at Newman run into each other. And So does she really have a talent, like, in business? What do you think her, does she? Um, well, with that resume. <laughs> and this resume is very see. interesting. Former vice president of research and development at Newman. That's big. Vice president. Former spokesperson for NVP Retreats. No one remembers that. Okay. <laughs> Former co-owner. Uh, oh, well, Crimson, well, Crimson Lights, of now course. Now I own Crimson, Crimson Lights. Lights. You know, it really is my favorite job that Sharon's had. Really? I, because you're serving coffee and talking to people. I, You know, I never thought I would love serving coffee so much. But it's not even <laughs> about that. It's just... I think this coffee house is really cute, and it's almost like a character on the show. It's been here since Nick and Sharon started, and um, I just love that we have some old sets that are yeah. still here. And not only that, but when Sharon's working here, she gets to run into all the other people in town because everybody comes into Crimson Lights to get coffee. So it, it gives Sharon more exposure to other characters. Whatever not character, going yeah, on. happens to come in, and that's that's what's nice. And the, because the job isn't corporate, it's relaxed, so it's a casual environment. Anything could happen. Um, I, I just think that makes it fun. And I remember Sharon uh, got the coffee house because of Dylan leaving. Yep, Dylan, Dylan owned it, and mm -hmm. he left into witness protection, so the coffee house was handed to Sharon. And uh, I thought, well, you know how fitting. Sharon and Nick once owned this a long time ago. That's right. And I think that's just kind of full circle. I think it's great. So I have some photos that Sharon is not, does not know what I'm going to show her, but I found some key moments that I think are worth noting that we are going to take a look at and see what Sharon's thoughts are as part of the Sharon Collins dossier. So one of them, I just want to say, this is, by the way, oh, Karen nice. Hensel is the actress who played yeah. Doris. Yeah. And I don't think you knew this. So this is the funny thing. Karen Hensel was my speech teacher at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Oh my goodness. She would teach us all the acting students standard American English. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God, that's my acting teacher working with Sharon Collins. Sharon, oh, and I was like- I knew she was an acting teacher. Yeah. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. Oh my she, goodness. Did Sharon feel this. responsible for the paralysis of her mother? There was an accident. Or yeah, that's correct. right. Uh, her mother had been in an accident because her mother drove away af going after Sharon. Um, I don't know where Sharon was going. Um, probably see her boyfriend, Frank, and her mom drove frantically after her and got into an accident. Um, so I guess Sharon felt, felt guilty to that extent. So can we all just agree that this, this... Oh, yes. ...was probably one of the... This is, till today, stands the test of time as the most gut-wrenching, powerful sequence of scenes when Cassie dies yeah. and Sharon acts her heart out and Joshua... Joshua, too.
remember watching, this is so weird too, and poignant, I had had my back surgery and I was really in pain and I was sitting there with my mom and dad and we were watching these scenes and of course I was crying, but my dad, who doesn't watch the show, was crying. Oh my gosh. And I just remember that moment with my mom who passed away last year and my dad just was crying. We all just sat there and bawled. That is how amazing and touching your work and Joshua's was oh. in that scene. And I will never forget it. Thank you. Um, so you impact people with these things. You realize that, you, I hope. Well, I, thank you. I, you know, I don't always watch every show. I, you know, I, some actors don't like looking at themselves that much. I'm one of them. But whenever I happen to see that come on YouTube or Twitter, somebody tweets it. I watch it and I cry every time I see it to this day. I can't believe I'm crying watching it. I'm, I I don't, it's just really, well really, done. yeah, it was really well done. It was well written. Cassie was, she had grown up on the show. She was a very beloved character and, and to have her die so tragically, I mean, I just think this is, yeah, you're right. It's one of the most gut-wrenching stories that the show has ever done. And it led to years and years and years of other story, all the way to all Cameron right. Grimes coming back and playing Mariah, who's a fantastic character. And if you look back at, at all of it in hindsight, you think, Gosh, somebody, did someone plan that? Because that's brilliant. And another great moment that I got to share from the audience, I don't I don't remember you and I talking that night or night, but in 1999, Sharon wins an Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series in the prettiest pink Cinderella dress to this day that I remember more than any other dress that anybody's ever worn. Really? I just think it's, you know it's the best dress. It's a great dress, right? I, I, I love it. I mean, but that's me. <clears throat> I want, I thought, you know, if I'm ever going to win an Emmy, I want to do it right. I'm doing the princess vibe um and so i just went in that direction with it that was you know a, it was a beautiful fun and, and amazing like magical night for me so i was that was how i wanted to look it was you know it was amazing night. do you Thank remember you. i your didn't name. know do you remember your name being called do you remember it at all? No. It's just a blur now? Yeah, I think you you, when you go into shock and you don't remember anything. You just black out, kind of. You don't even know what you're saying when you stand at the podium. Like, just whatever comes out of your mouth. <laughs> I mean, there was, you were in a category with Kelly Ripa and Kathleen Newt. Like, there were, like, other some, heavy hitters in that category. I know. I have no idea why I won. <laughs> but I'm glad I Because I remember did. The, it was really strong <laughs> that, that year. And you had been nominated a few times before for, in the younger category. Yeah. Yeah. Be just before that. Yeah. Right. Do that you, was my first time, I think. Did you ever save me. the pink dress? Is it I still have that pink dress. I'm keeping that forever. I'm so glad that you liked it. So this is what they did to Sharon. She had to wear a bikini when she was all the time. You know, all the time. All the time. Right? <laughs> yeah, so this was Newman Nick's got parties. Newman pool parties. Those were fun days. Were they? I love Are you like, Newman I have to get parties. in a bikini today? Yeah, or you but like we had so much fun doing those. And then Newman um, dinner parties like, um, <laughs> oh, the uh, Thanksgiving parties yeah. and the pool parties we looked forward to doing. Those were just fun. So days. all you guys were like, we can't eat for 10 days before the, the pool party scenes because we have to like look good. And you know what? When I was that age, it didn't matter. You could <laughs> do whatever you right. wanted now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't they have her... Should she do another? She was doing uh, lingerie. Or was she doing anything else later? Probably. Sharon yeah. was always in these yeah. little. Um, they always put her in these teddy nighties. You know, now we just do. Like, so you'd bra get a underwear. script and go like, "Oh, I'm in this today." Like, how did you handle that when it would come to you in the script? Um, I was fine with it. I, I, I. I <laughs> I'm one of the actors here that's, that's fine okay with, with that. Yeah, eating in a bikini or right. whatever. This was one of the most awful stories. Meaning, watching Sharon go through this. Elizabeth Bogish and the baby oh, and taking yeah. The, and the, yeah. You know, I really liked that storyline of Sharon. I kind of didn't like her being constantly in a psychiatric institute. Well, she but, freely, the thing about it that I didn't like, she just said, I'm going to go take care of this. Like, yeah, she And did. then like, she goes then and I then, thought, oh, no, I'm in Fairview again. I'm just going to be locked away. But I l ended up loving that storyline. So basically in the storyline, you think you're, there is no baby. Right. Right. And there's a baby switch. Right. Well, Sharon had uh, her baby uh, self-terminated, yeah. right? And then she didn't want to tell, tell Dylan. Dylan. So um, she hid that, though she knew the baby was gone. And then, right, when she went into the hospital to recuperate, she kept telling everyone that she's still pregnant. And then this doctor played into it, drugged her, and said, yeah, you indeed are. Here's your baby. <laughs> and then this baby shows up in her hand. There's the baby switch. Mm -hmm. And then you know that those stories are going to go on for ad nauseum. Well, those classic <laughs> baby switch storylines, the soaps were all about during that time. And then who should show up when Sage dies with the... Well, of course, me. Sharon. I'll take that baby. Do you remember filming these scenes? Oh, yeah, I do, because the baby was so cooperative. That's little Ozzy. And I had him when... 
in that last picture, when when the nurse was handing Sharon the baby, he was two weeks old. And um, here he's a little bit older, but I had baby Ozzy for a whole year from the time that That's he was right. two weeks old. And he was so cooperative. When I went to lay him down on her chest in that scene as she died, he like just went right along with it and like looked at Aww. her and he, he was perfect. It was so sad. This was sad. Yeah. This was it. And then, of course, while she's in fear of you, she meets crazy Patty, who's also loved that. And then they're fighting. Miss Patty so much. <laughs> I miss crazy Patty. I recently saw some YouTube scenes of her and I when she was in the prison and she was calling Sharon and saying, warning her. And Sharon went to the prison. They were on the phone with the glass because that's airing in France, I think, right now. Yeah. So I'm seeing it sometimes on Twitter. Yeah. I love when people tweet scenes, by the way. Oh, she so. likes to tweet your scenes. Tweet now, here's scenes. here's something. Do you remember Oh my God. This. <laughs> I've never seen that image of that. This event. is quite the image wow, of this. Wow, I look like so I'm terrified. Are and you, I was. Are you jumping out of a. What is going on here? So we're jumping out of an airplane. Okay. Sharon and Nick are because uh, Cameron Kirsten was after them. And they, they jump off an airplane. But what really happened was we were at Van Nuys Airport and we were in an airport <laughs> hangar and they strapped us into these like um, bungee jumping things. So we, they dropped us quite a distance um, from the ceiling down into um, mat. But, and, and you were fine, you know, just bungee. And, but we, I was terrified I'd never done that before and you can tell by my face. <laughs> so are you all up for the adventures that they throw you into? Yeah, or are because you like I've done that and fallen off a cliff and flown through a window. I mean, for my first 10 years here, I was always doing stunts and I would say, you know, it's funny. I, I'm not I a stunt woman. I didn't know I would do stunts. I didn't know that I would be a mom. I didn't, it was, it's really been an adventure working here. And she clearly likes prison. Oh, yeah. Prison this, is, what? I always have fun when I am in prison. Not so much Fairview, but prison, prison. yeah. So she ends up getting locked up uh, quite a few times. <laughs> Many times. And, uh, and Nikki has too. Yeah. I'm in good company. Yeah, you do get locked up several times. And then one of the, I believe. Oh, Drew. Drew and Sharon were good Sharon's friends. Sharon's yeah. good friend. What Her can you say about the Drew? Friend. That was the one and only, right? Yeah, because Grace turned out to be a bad friend. Do you remember Jennifer Garris and Grace? Really, mm -hmm. Right. So this was Sharon's real friend who was on her side and never tried to steal Nick. And, and they, I loved their energy together. She was so silly. And, and she, she was out. devastated when she, wasn't it when Drew died? Wasn't Sharon? Oh, yeah. Out? They went off the cliff together. That's right. Sharon survived. Sharon survived. Mm -hmm. And then we have Phyllis and Sharon. Oh, oh, gosh, I don't remember that. It, is, are you... Laughing with each other, or <laughs> it looks like it. It's a pretty picture, but so, I don't remember that costume or what we were doing. <laughs> so, she, so you we and rarely Michelle, had a laugh like that. No, as you're always gouging so probably, each other's eyes out. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You made me, you made me stoop way down to your no, level, fellas. Could not be on my level if you were airlifted. <gasps> ah! <sighs> my god. You Sharon. I don't need any rescue. Do it for I'm good. I'm oh my God! Liar! Liar! Everything. So what about the Sharon Phyllis relationship and how long and twisted road that has been? from ending up with your man, Nick, and right. all of those things, and they're constantly in each other's orbit regarding men. Right. And, now and last been, year, yeah. they were part of the JT. Sharon and Phyllis were part of the JT the murder, murder cover, cover up. up. And, you know, I love that. I just love doing silly things like we think someone's dead. We roll them up in a rug and we haul them out into a car like Sharon did with Cameron Kirsten. Which I wanted to talk to you about because she shoved him in a car. Shoved him in a car and drove around. And drove around. And, and so when we did this JT storyline last year, which um, that just reminded me of that. So it was fun. But what was also great was working with all of these ladies. You know, most of my storylines involve, you know, family or the man that Sharon's in love with. And so it was great to just work with this team of women on the show. And it made these characters have to get along. Sharon and Nikki had to face each other and get along. Sharon and Phyllis did too. And it kind of changed all of the relationships right. that they had had for years and years. And I liked that about the story. I love when a story progresses the relationships between the characters. Right. And of course, there is this ultimate 
relationship with Nikki. Right. Because do you think they think they're the same cloth? They like, do. They, they oh, think yeah. they're the same cloth. Well, Sharon cloth. thinks that. I, Sh- uh, maybe Nikki does too, and that's why they are catty with each other. They see too much of each other in one another. You are stuffed with so much silicone, you weigh more than most jockeys do. Hmm. Not all the real ones sag. What do you know about real? Nothing about you is real. You're all lipstick and mascara, pathetic attempt to try to look young. Not all the makeup in the world could do that for you. You are a whore, you tramp. You are a dried up drunk. Why don't you mount one of Victor's Clydesdales and ride on over to Ginny? Oh, oh, that's a good one, Sharon. Like, Nikki thinks she's on to Sharon, that Sharon's manipulating something right. as a gold digger. Right. Like, that's where I think Nikki, because Nikki, because Nikki was, was a gold digger. Right. Right. So there's that. And then there are all these fight scenes you've had. Right. Right. And then there's a lot of cooling off in sweet scenes where we've had scenes where we've sat down and told each other how much we really care about each other. And so I love the love hate in it. I think it's, it's very real to life how one can have a relationship with their mother-in-law in real life. It can be a little bit um, off and on or hate and love mixed together. And and Melody and I just love playing that. It comes naturally to us. We have fun doing it. Um, she was part of my Cameron Kirsten storyline and helping me with the body. Melody she seems to always so help fun. with the body or something, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love having to call on Nikki for help. It's great. So when <laughs> they, back in the, uh, several years ago, when they introduced a kleptomania and she was stealing things, mm-hmm. and then later it was played out to be bipolar disorder. Right. And there was a, I remember us talking that it was a difficult time trying to thread what was going on with her. Right. Why was that happening and how do you... and how do you make that as an actress make sense well, and work? And, and it can had, be hard yeah. because sometimes they'll write something like that for you, like kleptomania, and I wasn't given any explanation for it. I don't know that the writers at the time had decided why. Sometimes I think, you know, uh, and I'm just guessing, that writers write a long-term story. Sometimes they kind of just write a little story and see how it looks before they decide what they want to do with it. There's just a few different ways about going about it. So I didn't know why I was stealing anything. So it does make it difficult. You have to try to come up with your own motivation on why. And I figured, um, well, she's for her to do something that outrageous, it's out of character, she must be kind of crazy. So I went with crazy, and then they later wrote bipolar. bipolar. So when you look back at your 25 years on this show, what is that? What is the wildest storyline you think you've played? I guess outrageous because I loved it, or just, I don't know. The nature of the storyline was last year's JT story. I mean, here we had an abusive husband who ends up getting killed, or so we think, and all the girls team up together. And I think, and covering it up for as long and then as Nick we did. Nick wears a prosthetic JT mask. Right. Okay. I mean, that was a pretty outrageous story, but in a different way, outrageous. Mm-hmm. And um, it went. It was a whole year long. This story, and um, us girls just had a great time doing it and then we had to we dug up the body one night because we were going to move it we were shooting at night outside this shoveling dirt in the life of Sharon. This just, I, mean, yeah. I love stuff like that yeah. that's all i want to do if i could write my own uh storyline i would always be digging up bodies moving them around and Sharon you know what i like about it is down. that no one thought about the girls as bad girls oh no uh, no one in town no. ma- painted them black they, no. this was just fun storyline it's not you're a bad person um that's not the point of the story so i love doing fun mr and mrs smith you know uh, you've you know, always adventure. liked that you've liked that yeah i remember I you telling yep that. i mean uh, i love a simple love story too because <clears> that's just really easy and i can just kind of take the year off and i can Take the year off with a love Take story. Take the year off. I got a love story. That's going to be easy. So I've got some men that have been key to Sharon's life, but I think a, a man that was very key to Sharon's life is oh, yeah. Bill Bell. And I love that photo of us. I have that it's one of my, in my favorite. House. Do you? Yeah. I found this. I thought this is such a great picture of it's, the two of you. It is the what perfect photo. What does this mean photo. to you to have this I, photo Everything. Ev- to have such a great photo of the two of us together. Um, I, You know, I, like I said, I keep it. Do um, you miss him? I do, yeah. I keep it, that is a framed photo in my office at home. I see it every day when I walk through there, and and that's what I want to see. This is, he's the reason why we're here, why the show is here, why I've played Sharon Newman all these years. Um, because he hired me, this has been my life for Do you remember years. any words of wisdom or anything he said to you that you can share, like, Sharon, 
blah, 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 or what he thought of you as an actress or the character. Was there anything mm-hmm. that was touching you that you kept that he in your heart that he may have said to you? You know, you know he never gave me any notes about how to play Sharon. Um, That's pretty good, right? He, yeah, he let me just do what I did. He was, he was the kind of writer, and I really loved this, that let the actor interpret the script for themselves and bring what you have to bring to the character, not give you a bunch of notes and, and ideas. He, um, and I think that's, that's why they hired three Sharons. Rather than try to bend an actor a certain way, they just wanted to hire one that brought what it was they were looking for. So I like that he gave me that freedom, and um, that was amazing. As an artist, it's nice to work that way with other artists. Yeah, and then you've had to, as all actors do in this medium, we have different regimes come in who write the characters. Mm-hmm. Do you and it's do you feel it's your responsibility though to have the continuity of the character in your head if there is something that you don't think plays into the history of them and go, yeah. wait, this wouldn't track. Right. Yeah. Because everyone doesn't know the minutia no. as much as the actors yeah, who played all possibly, the beats, right? right? So yeah. and sometimes the actor doesn't remember either. But right. you know who always remembers? The audience. They're on it every day. On it every day. Every day. Um, so, and I know that if I see something that uh, the continuity is wrong in, I will say something because I will tell them the audience will pick up on this. They love noticing little off nuances, things that were, you know, that, you know, like if there's something wrong when you're your continuity of your costume or something that you say about history that was off or wrong. But you're right. You know, we do have to say something if the actor realizes that because how can people otherwise remember if you're you're writing here and you're sort of new and yet the characters have been here 25 years you can't possibly catalog everything that happened with every character well give me a few words i'm going to show you some of your leading men i just want a few quick words okay on like what would you say about working with linda oh Ashby. one of my favorites okay favorite I love and his wife Susan Walters loved her version of Diane. So one love of the top two. faves is Linda Nashby. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Peter Bergman. Love him. He's so you know what we, Peter and I still talk to this day about when we were working together. We were always first up in the schedule. We were always right on uh, right on it with our dialogue, and we moved very fast together. So we knew when we had scenes together that we were going to get out of here like nine a.m. Those were our days. You were like the quick, the efficient. <laughs> yeah, group. that's what Peter and I remember about working together. But Jordy Villasuso. Oh, I love Jordy. Oh my gosh, let me see that one. Oh, that's recent, it's kind recent. of. Sorry. Uh, Meanwhile, Sharon slept with Adam. Right. Right. Well, they broke up, and Sharon's sure. in love with Adam. Yeah. Okay. So Ray's just kind of milk toast for her. But she loves him still. She loves Ray, you know, but, but, but Adam excites love of her in life. her life. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of, Mark Grossman as Adam. So I hear you were in the screen tests. You did screen tests with the Adams. Mm-hmm. So when Mark screen tested and you were there, what did you think? By the time we were at the screen test, I knew that this was the right actor for the role. Um, so we were just kind of going through the motions. And he and I just sat on the side in chairs like this, chatting most of the time while we were waiting for them to set up the screen test. But I wasn't even worried about the screen test. I'm like, this this is a done deal. We didn't even have to be doing this. But it'll be fun, so we'll do it. Now, I knew when we did the previous reading that Mark was the right one of all the people that because? we read. Well, there were a lot of great performances, but um, his performance just really stood out. I loved um, I loved how he really felt like Victor Newman. He felt like he not only looked like him, but he there was something in his performance that just acted like Victor. More so than I've seen, you know, in a long time. And so I said, oh, I know Joshua and um, Gina and I were in that, that audition. And so we read all the actors, and everybody in the room said, so what do you think? And I said, Mark. And Joshua said, yeah, Mark. And then Gina said, yeah, Mark. But, you know, Sharon, Adam has done some really crappy stuff to Sharon over the past. She's not been the stand-up guy, but she loves him anyways. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I think, you know how I see them is um, 
Victor's not always been a great man to Nikki or to anyone else either. Victor is the bad guy in town. And Nikki loves him anyway, and they are the super couple of the Young and the Restless, and no one's ever blamed Nikki for being in love with Victor. And I think that this is another this incarnation. Is rationalization. <laughs> yeah, I guess. This is another incarnation <laughs> yeah. of them. Yeah. Okay, Brad Carlton, oh, Don Diamond. Don Diamond. Uh, I still see him in the hall all the time, thankfully, because he's at B and B. Yes. So and yeah, he, we always he, say hi. And Brad died in a freeze. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember what happened. I think he died in a freeze because of her son. Right. Yes, and of course. Oh, look at that, Joshua. So Joshua. So how many times have they broken you guys up? Do you think? Um, I think four or five. Seven thousand two hundred. And how many marriages do you think? I give of myself, and together with you, in the sight of God, to bring love to the lives of those we touch. As a symbol of my promise, I give you this ring. Make you my husband for the length of our days. To love and to comfort you in joy and in sorrow. To support and to care for you. To respect and to cherish you. To give of myself and together with you in the sight of God. To bring love to the lives of all those we touch. They've been married only once? I, they they Twice. were planning on getting married. And then that got busted but up. But it got I busted really up got, every yeah, time yeah, by yeah, Phyllis. Right. So I don't know that they ever managed to get married again. They were engaged several times. So they got engaged there. And I think Sharon left him during the engagement to go to New Orleans and be with Adam. She walked out on Nick's engagement to be with Adam. A long time so ago. So she clearly has a problem. She wants the bad boy. She doesn't like the good guys. Well, is that really a problem? I mean, is <laughs> Nick, does Nikki have a problem because she loves Victor? Okay, really quickly. Do you remember this one? She was Sherry. Remember when you were Sherry? This no. is Sam. Oh, yeah. You were Sherry on the They, they thought the you died and you were on the run okay, and you were that, Sherry and this was that. Sam. Okay, back to what back was to one what of my loved. favorite okay. out outrageous scenes. A scene I don't know why all my life as an actress I've wanted to do, and that's go on the run, go into some <laughs> dirty gas station bathroom and dye my hair. I just love the idea of doing that. And Maria Bell wrote that, and I just, I love that whole sequence of scenes. How was he to work with? Sean Patrick Flam? Oh, he was so kind. Mm -hmm. And then Steve. Oh, Steve. Dylan. Dylan. And then that was sad. Yeah, yeah. that was a really sad ending. Yeah. We have to show that yes. one. It's a good kiss. You yeah. kiss a lot of people on the show. I do. I'm lucky. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap up, but oh, no. I just want to say um, how amazing it's been to watch you all of the years that we have. And I'm sure the fans are the way. You're so genuine and honest in your portrayal. Oh, and I think you. you bring it all the time. And I think people have rooted for this character, at times wanted to slap her mm -hmm. for some of the choices she makes. Mm -hmm. But you've been able to balance being that heroine and yet bring the drama. Because sometimes heroines can be boring to play. That's true. And I feel it's a difficult job. It is. And it's a I very think, complex character to play heroine. Because you always have to be a little bit crazy, but a little bit sane, a little bit kind, a little bit adventurous. You've got to be a great mom and a bad mom at the same time. It's a lot to balance. You know, Joshua always told me, you know, you play one of the most difficult characters on the show, if not the most difficult character right, on the show. Right, because you have to be a good girl. Like, it's hard to play It's not all one that. note all no, the time. it's not one note. No. So I want to know, what would you want to say to the fans who've supported you all these years and have stood by you? I know you have a lot of fans, Sharon. So what would you want to say to them in thanking them for the support? Oh, I know exactly years? what I want to say to them. I have always felt like these 25 years in working here wasn't just about uh, playing Sharon or working here with all the wonderful people I work with. It has been just as much about going through this with all of you, especially because of social media. But even when we didn't have it, we always knew that you were there and we were partners with you because it really is sort of a partnership. And I really have felt like we were in this together the whole time. And 
we don't have a studio audience, but we know you're there. We love hearing from you. It really was just as much about you, this this journey I've gone on, than it was anything else. And so thank you for being there and watching the show, um, being faithful to the show. Thanks for going on the ride with me. So make sure to watch more of Sharon and the romances and perils of Sharon, the character. Hopefully some fun stuff <laughs> coming up All the fun stuff coming up. Yeah. Weekdays on The Young and the Restless. Happy anniversary, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. And you are amazing. Thank you for having me on of the course, show. Of course.